This brief tutorial is going to talk about physical exam findings that matter. Unfortunately, in today's world of medicine, health providers spend most of their time thinking about lab tests, thinking about imaging studies, and unfortunately thinking about how to get medical insurance to pay for those lab tests and imaging studies. It seems as though the art of the physical exam has died. I am sure that as busy fellows, less than 10% of your day is spent at the bedside actually examining patients. Today I want to share with you some clinical pearls that will hopefully help you to quickly identify key physical findings that should raise a red flag for an underlying endocrine disorder. In some cases, recognizing the physical finding and initiating the proper workup and treatment plan can be life-saving for the patient. To help you remember these endocrine clinical pearls, I'm going to build a pearl bracelet for you. Each pearl on the bracelet will represent a letter in the word pearl, and each letter will be associated with a physical exam finding and a related endocrine disorder. So let's get started. The first pearl on the bracelet represents the letter P. P stands for proptosis. Proptosis is characterized by protrusion of the eyeballs. Bilateral proptosis is most commonly caused by Graves' disease, a form of autoimmune thyroiditis, where antibodies stimulate the TSH receptor, resulting in hypothyroidism. The bulging eyes are due to edema, lymphocytic infiltration, and the accumulation of glycosaminoglycans in the preorbital tissue. Untreated Graves' disease can result in a thyroid storm or extreme hyperthyroidism, which can cause tachycardia, hypertension, and even death. If you notice proptosis in one of your patients, assess for hyperthyroidism by sending at least these thyroid function tests, TSH and free T4. You can test for the antibody, TSI or thyroid stimulating immunoglobulin, and then also send a CBC and a CMP to assess for uh, later possible effects that can be associated with the medication methimazole that we use to treat Graves' disease. The second pearl on the bracelet represents the letter E. E stands for excited neurons, the cause of tetany. Tetany is due to increased neuromuscular excitability in the setting of electrolyte abnorm abnormalities, one of which is hypocalcemia. With tetany, the patient experiences involuntary muscle spasms. One way to check for tetany is to try to elicit a Schwostick sign. To do this, tap the facial nerve a couple of centimeters anterior to the end airlobe with a fingertip. Facial muscle twitching equals a positive Schwostick sign. Note that 25% of children with normal calcium levels have a positive Schwostick sign. However, if a Schwostick sign is found on exam, it would be wise to check a calcium level. Untreated severe hypocalcemia can lead to arrhythmias and laryngospasms. The third pearl on the bracelet represents the letter A. A stands for ambiguous genitalia. Be sure to examine the diaper region in your newborn patient at least once. Ambiguous genitalia are not clearly male or female. So what are some clues for ambiguous genitalia? In a genetic male, these clues include undescended testes, hypospadias, and a micropenis. A micropenis is one that has a stretched length of less than 2.5 centimeters. In a genetic female, these clues include an enlarged clitoris, posterior labial fusion, or an inguinal mass. One cause of ambiguous genitalia can be salt wasting congenital adrenal hyperplasia, or CAH. In CAH, there is a defect in enzymes involved in adrenal production of vital hormones, including cortisol, mineral corticoids, and androgens. Untreated salt wasting CH can result in an adrenal crisis, a life threatening condition characterized by hypotension, 
hypoglycemia, hyponatremia, and hyperkalemia. If you have a patient with ambiguous genitalia, please screen for the most common cause of CH, 21 hydroxylase deficiency, by getting a 17 hydroxyprogesterone level. Don't forget to check for electrolyte abnormalities as well with a BMP. The fourth print on the bracelet represents the letter R. R stands for roaming eyes or nystagmus. Nystagmus is the rapid involuntary movement of the eyeball. It can be vertical movements, horizontal movements, or rotary movements. Nystagmus can be a clue for eye involvement in septo-optic dysplasia, or SOD. SOD is characterized by the presence of two or more of the following, pituitary dysfunction, optic nerve hypoplasia, and midline, midline brain defects. It is crucial that we assess pituitary functions in patients who have nystagmus. Left untreated, pituitary dysfunction can be fatal. Send a BMP to check for hypernatremia that can be seen in DI, send cortisol levels to assess for central adrenal insufficiency, and check TFTs to assess for central hypothyroidism. Other hormone deficiencies are not life-threatening and do not, be, do not need to be checked urgently. The fifth and final pearl on this bracelet represents the letter L. L stands for labored breathing or Kussmaul breathing. Kussmaul breaths are rapid and deep. Unlike asthma and bronchiolitis, the lungs usually are clear and without wheezing. These breaths are the body's attempt to correct me metabolic acidosis. One major cause of metabolic acidosis in children can be diabetic ketoacidosis or DKA. DKA can be the initial presentation for a patient with new onset diabetes. DKA can be fatal if improperly treated. Be sure to get a venous blood gas to assess for acidosis and hyperglycemia. Now you have a collection of clinical pearls that can help you recognize some underlying endocrine disorders in a timely manner. To review one last time, we said that P stood for proptosis, which should make you think about hyperthyroidism, and you should order TFTs, TSI, CBC, and a CMP. E stood for excited neurons, the cause of tetany. If you see a positive show stick sign on exam, please obtain a calcium level to assess for hypocalcemia. A stood for ambiguous genitalia, which can be a presenting symptom for CAH. To help us to identify impending adrenal crisis, please obtain a BMP and a 17 OHP level. R stood for roaming eyes or nystagmus, which can be a sign of eye involvement in septo-optic dysplasia disease. SOD also increases the risk of pituitary dysfunction, and so a BMP, cortisol, and TFTs should be checked right away. And finally, L stood for labored breathing or cool small breathing, which can be a sign of DKA. So be sure to get a venous blood gas as soon as possible. Take these pearls, go forth, and save lives. This book is a good reference for more detailed information on the disorders discussed in this tutorial.